Hello and welcome to Tony Broom Ministries. This time we have a Bible teaching session from Luke chapter 2. This chapter contains the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. There were witnesses to respond to His first coming. And you and I are to be witnesses for His second coming. Christ's coming calls us to respond to Him with worshipful obedience. And that's why we're calling this session Responding to Christ's Coming. We respond to His coming with worshipful obedience. Luke chapter 2 verse 38. She coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of Him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. This is a wonderful lady that we will read about who was looking for the first coming of Jesus Christ. Let us all, my beloved, be looking for Him to come again. And He's promised to come again in power and glory and redeem those who are waiting for Him. To those who look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Joseph and Mary obeyed when God gave them the commandment to do, not only to make a way for Christ to be born, and to say, Yes, be it unto me according to your word. But they obeyed the commands as given in the law of Moses. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. There's a popular video which is out now, it has some girl on there that's questioning of whether we should say the name of Jesus, whether we should call him Yeshua, or whether we should call some other name. But I want to tell you emphatically, brothers and sisters, that these doctrines of demons and doctrines of devils that come around and even get a hold of Christians. Timothy talked about it. Paul taught him about it. In his first epistle, he talked about it in the second epistle also, but the doctrines of demons, where they forbid to marry and command to abstain from foods that God has given us to eat, and all kind of things that man-made religion puts in. I suggest that people go get them a job or do something. They're bored. People are too bored. They sit around and come up with all these things that don't make sense the courts of heaven, and all these things that people are coming up with. Yes, God is judge, and He rules over the courts of heaven and earth, but He takes care of that. Some of this stuff that people are coming up with, and this particular lady who questioned the use of the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He was so named of the angel before he was even conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And now they had to do everything according to the law. The eight days were accomplished for him to be circumcised. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. This is what God said because of the firstborn who were slain in Egypt. I slew all the firstborn of Egypt, and I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And now all those who are to be born, every male will be counted holy to the Lord. And this fulfills the law. Jesus had to fulfill the law in every detail. And he did. Praise be to God for that. He is the fulfillment of the law to righteousness to all those who believe. To offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And this tells you, of course, that Joseph and his mother were poor because of the offering that was said. If you can't afford to get the lamb, then you would get two turtle doves or two young pigeons. There was another man now. Simeon is an older man. He praises God. Luke 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Simeon is the Old 
Testament version is Simon in the New Testament, Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. He was waiting for the Messiah to be born. He was anticipating his coming, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Just think of how wonderful it is, beloved, to have had that revelation revealed to you that you will not die before you have seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. They had no idea who this was. And he prophesied, he spoke out, and he praised God, and he said, Lord, let the old man depart in peace now, for mine eyes have seen your salvation, the light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Jesus would be the one who would bring everybody together, red and yellow, black and white, Jew and Gentile alike. He would bring it all together. And now they're praising God. Simeon blessed them. That is, he blessed his parents, Joseph and Mary, and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The teaching has arisen that Mary was co-redeemer with Christ and nearly died with him. Well, that's not what he was saying. He was just simply saying that you love your son, your son loves you, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. She was there with Jesus near the cross when he suffered and died, but she did not die with him. She is not a co-redeemer. You don't need a co-redeemer. You just need a redeemer. If you have a redeemer, you don't need a co. You don't need a co and a mo and a joe and a ho. All you need is just a savior, Jesus Christ. Anna is a woman who is an elderly woman. She proclaims Christ. In verse 36, there was one Anna, a prophetess of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. So she was married for seven years, and she was a widow of about fourscore and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And you got to figure the age of this woman. Let's say, for instance, that in the Jewish culture, and I'm not all familiar with all the Jewish culture, but let us say that the young lady was 14 years old. We'll give her 14 years. 14 years is still young to be married, but 14 years old to be married, and she was Marriage, she lived with a husband for seven years. So 14 plus 7 is 21. And if you add the four score and four, 84 years to that, you'll come up with at least 105 years old. She was around 105 years old, and she praised God. She never did remarry. She gave her life in dedication to the Lord. And for over 84 years, she was a widow who was dedicated to God. What a wonderful testimony we have of this Anna, who is like Hannah in the Old Testament. She coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And so we have these people, Simeon, and now Anna, who is giving praise and glory and honor to God. It's a good thing to respond favorably to the gospel as they responded to Christ's first coming, we are to respond to His second coming. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Have you made Him your Lord? Have you given your heart and life to Him? Have you turned the controls of your life and your body 
over to Christ. He wants to make a difference in your life. He will change your life. He will redeem you. He will pardon you. Forgive your sins. He will write your name in the Lamb's book of life. Let Him do it right now. Make Him your Savior. Receive Him as Savior and make Him your Lord today. Heavenly Father, I praise You for this opportunity to have taught this word from Luke chapter 2. Use it for the glory of God, the building up of the body of Christ, the reaching and the saving of the lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Responding to Christ's coming has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.